So what do you guys do? What do you um, so we're with a group called Fair Share. That's our personal name at Mitchell okay. High School. But um, our program, it's like a like a national program called Lead to Feed, and um, it kind of focuses on like food insecurities, like hence the name. Um, so we'll partner with like the food bank and make sure like um, like a lot of community service. This is an it's like an educational video. So we're trying to make the public aware that poverty is real, like socioeconomic inequality is a thing, like. That's why we wanted to do these like one-on-one -on -one interviews to actually get raw information. Like this is real life, like you were saying. Like it actually goes on. So that was our main, like our goal was we need to get this information out there. What sacrifices have you and your family have to made? Our family was like out of debt for the first time in like years and years. But when I got sick last year, my mom had to stop working for a year, no, not for a year, for like five months and moved to Virginia into my house with me to help me graduate. They like made that sacrifice for me and they've had to make a lot of financial sacrifices for me. I wouldn't eat because my son needed to eat. Our program is called TOP. And what we do is we assist families who are quote unquote at risk. Um, at, at risk basically means that a household is not has some risk factors that's keeping it from forming from performing or functioning optimally. So when we say at risk, we we are talking about factors such as um, low income, um, maybe uh, not the best resources as far as academics and schools, maybe family dysfunction, mental health can play a part in that where people live, um, the neighborhood that they live in um, can actually be a part of that. So those, those folks who have some disadvantages, um, those are typically the, um, the kids and the families that we work with. Households with annual income lower than $35,000 spent 30% of net income on food expenditure. These households spent less on core foods, such as fruits, vegetables, and cereals, compared to households with moderate food security. Some health issues that can stem from food insecurity among adults are obesity, anxiety, depressive symptoms, poor sleep, poor oral health, and lower self-reported overall health. Um, so you said single parent households have had are common among their clients? Probably 80% are single family households. With your current job, do you receive any like, employee benefits? I do not. Uh, I don't get any sick leave, vacation, nothing like that. So if I don't work, I don't get paid. Um, what are your like family backgrounds, like your parents and stuff? Um, my family background, my mom um, living and being raised in New York, um, I may be completely honest with you, she was a crackhead. <laughs> um, so difficult growing yeah. up. Uh, my grandmother stepped in and raised us. Okay. Um, thank God for that. Dad's been in and out of jail, so... Um, Oh, yeah. Not really a great support system. So. Right. So was your grandmother like your role model? As you my were grandmother and my grandfather, yes. Both of them, mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah, do you feel like because you didn't have that sort of like parental support, that's why you got into your financial situation? Mm -hmm. Because you didn't have that grandmother. Yeah. yeah. Concerning hunger and food insecurity, 
the percentage of households who were food insecure on average was 10.1% from the years 2015 to 2017, meaning that at some point during these years, they experienced difficulty providing enough food due to lack of money or resources. Do you find that some of your clients, even though they may have fallen into hard times um, now, like in later in life, do you find that some of your clients were like struggled as like a teenager or kid? Yeah, some of that can fall into family history. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe mother was on the services, and you know, that's an, an environment that they lived in, and you know, sometimes um, it takes others or some people longer to kind of break some of those um, curses is what we would say generational curses um, and through that process that's why we try to come in and work with them to knock down some of those barriers so that um, they can be self-sufficiency and maybe they learn from some of the things that they maybe they shouldn't have done the last time and they yeah. do some things differently this time but that's come through the process of educating our clients and just giving them um, the services that they need. A Canadian study examined the relationship of food security status to diet and self-perceived health and academic quality among students receiving emergency food hampers from the campus food bank at the University of Alberta. A convenient sample of 58 students completed the survey. Of participating students, 10.3% were food secure, 44.8% were moderately food insecure, and 44.8% were severely food insecure. Overall, 32.8% rated their general health as fair slash poor, 27.6% rated their mental health as fair slash poor, and 60.3% indicated at least one adverse academic outcome of not enough money for food. Mm. And do you feel like that you can provide enough support for your family, or do you feel like you could have more help with it? Um, I mean, I definitely think I could have more help with it. That's why I'm trying to further my education. Right. Teens who grow up with food insecurity often focus less on their studies due to poor health and sleep. Hungry teens were found to be 7 to 12 times more likely to exhibit behaviors like fighting, stealing, and disobeying teachers, therefore having negative effects on their school performance. Do you like your job? I love it. <laughs> What's your favorite part? I love really working with our clients and creating an opportunity for them to make changes in their lives. Um, seeing them from, seeing, well, actually working with them through that process of becoming self-sufficient and knocking down barriers that they may have um, that will cause them from not obtaining employment. We will continue this video series next year and the year after with mental health and poverty. This video was basically about spreading awareness to what goes on in our communities and other communities around the world. Thank you for watching. Please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye! Bye.